Recently, I've been seeing a lot of awesome footage filmed with FPV drones. Well, today I'm going to show you how to make these mind-bending FPV drone style animations all for free with just Blender and an Xbox controller. This is honestly the most fun I've had with Blender in a while. Originally, this was going to be a 45 minute tutorial diving down the rabbit hole of all the fun things you could do with this. But instead, today we're just going to put out a short and simple guide helping you get up and running. So if you do want more on this, make sure you subscribe. Turn on notifications because I'll be uploading follow-up tutorials on this throughout the week. All right, so here's how we can get started with this. Number one, a link in the description for the drone cam GitHub plugin. You want to click code and download the zip right here. Now, this is a fork of the Arendelle X input reader, which I recommend you download as well if you want to customize the controls on your own. As you can see here, the controls in this, you have throttle, yaw, pitch, roll, which is really cool. But I wanted to add in some stuff with the triggers just because I'm bad at flying FPV drones, so I tried to make it a little bit easier. So optional. If you do want to build on this, I recommend you download this as well. The next thing you're going to need is Blender 4.3. So make sure you are updated. You want to go up to edit and then preferences and go over to your add on section and we can click here to install the zip. Go ahead and select the one that you downloaded from GitHub. Once you've done that, we can search for drone cam. You'll see it right there. Make sure it's checked on and then you can come over here on the right and it should be down here. Drone cam. You want to click to add the drone cam setup. So essentially, this is just a geometry node ran little triangle. So if we go to geometry nodes, they set up a simulation here to uh, to create these realistic drone physics whenever you move around. And then the camera is parented to that. Step number two is to connect your controller. So I'm using um, just an Xbox controller here. And to make this easier, I actually have this little Xbox um, overlay, which you can see. So now you see what I'm actually doing. So once you have your drone set up in here, you can click start stop and you want to also click to be in your camera view. And now we are flying around and it's kind of hard at first. Uh, as you can see, I actually looked up a tutorial on just learning FPV flying drones. So I'll link that as well. Honestly, it didn't help that much. You kind of just need practice. The best advice I have is to change your settings until you are fully comfortable and then just to practice a little bit. So let's get everything set up. We're going to come over to the modifiers. You can see they have some easy little geometry node presets here just to change things like throttle power. Let's also just add some more frames with this so we can practice flying around longer than 250. So I'll go 10,000 frames and let's actually give ourselves a little environment here. So I downloaded this free city model. So let's go ahead and load in that model. Now I'm also going to be an EV here just to give myself um, essentially like almost real time view in the camera, which is really cool because you can change lighting and all that on the fly, which we'll talk about. Uh, you, if you want, you can turn on ray tracing. You can even have motion blur while you do this. Um, just depends on what kind of PC you have. But either way, I'm actually going to select this, scale it up. I think I'm going to add a sun. So we'll go sky texture. And just so you can see this better, we'll go to color management and I'll put this on standard. And that looks pretty nice. All right, so we can click start, stop. Flying around looks super cool. Now, the only issue here, in my opinion, the throttle is just a little bit crazy. I'm just kind of using the default Xbox controller. So I'm going to show you how I customize the controls for this. But like I said, in terms of like real time making any changes, this is super awesome. Say, for example, you think that this shot is really cool. You just wish the sun was in the background. You can click on the environment, rotate it over just like that. Maybe you're trying to fly around, create some specific animation, uh, but you don't want something. It's in the way you can literally just click click delete, it's gone. So again, you have a lot of like real time control for just being able to change things as well as being able to carefully control the camera and just like create some really cool animations. Now I'm going to show you how I change this setup around just to give me a bit more control. You want to select the drone object up here in the top right and then switch over to geometry nodes just to take a look at that. And uh, before we do all that, let's actually just change the base settings. So throttle power, it depends on your scene, but I like going 0.1. This is kind of a larger scene. Maybe I'd even go like 0.3. Drag is very important. If you want to have those like sweeping rotation shots on a specific object, it kind of just pulls you through. So for example, if I pass by this building, see, I'm going to go crazy fast, rotate around, and I'm not touching anything on the controller, but it's still dragging me forward. So it can be pretty useful. But if you don't like that for any reason, if you want it to be more precise control, you can put that up to something like five. Now you're not going to feel like you have that drone physics, but you do have a lot more control. You know, get like the exact shot you want, then you can bump that up. So if you want to customize your controls just to maybe use the triggers to do some stuff, 
you can download that second plugin that I have in the description, the original X input that this uh, was forked from. And if you see, all I have to do is just click to enable the X input. And now if I click my right trigger, you can see right here above me, this number should be going up, which means it's working. And if we come over to drone cam, now that we've enabled through X input, again, this is the same thing. Now it's reading that as well. So if you don't have the X input plugin, it's not going to be able to read that trigger. But now that we do have that trigger working, what we can do is click on the drone object here and we can come over to the geometry node, the simulation. I'm not going to go super in depth with this. I'm just going to keep it very simple. Say, for example, you want to use your triggers to move up and down. You can take this throttle geometry node section right here. And if you want to understand it better, you just click to look at the group and it's essentially taking the X input read for the left thumb. And then it's just using some math. So what we can do is we can duplicate this. So just click shift D and I'll just move it over here. And I'm going to click this little button just so we're not changing anything in the other nodes, uh, just so it's isolated. And I'll name this up. Now we can come into the group and the only thing we need to change is the X input. So instead of left thumb, we'll go shift A, we'll go X input reader. You should have this node once you've installed that X input plugin and we'll take right trigger and place it right here. Now, also very important here, we want to make the throttle go only forward. So only on the Y axis, we want to make the triggers only go up or down on the Z axis. So make sure this is connected to Z, which it should be by default. Let's go back to the original throttle here. And this is throttle. So if you go forward fast, it's going to pull you up normally. Let's make this only go on the Y axis. So we'll just connect it to Y. So now we need to do one more thing that is to create the down movement. And we're going to do that with our left trigger. So I'll just click shift D again, isolate this by clicking here and I'll name this down. And then we'll just swap in this X input. So we'll take left trigger, connect it there and we're fine. So that's all you need to do. Let's actually test this out. So we'll go back to the timeline, click here to start it. And now if I click my triggers. Okay. So now we're going up with left and we're going up with right. So we need to change one more thing, geometry node. So for left, we want to go down. So just change this to a negative. And I think it's a little too strong anyway. So I'll make this negative five throttle and we'll make this five. So now right trigger goes up, left trigger goes down. Exactly what we want. Perfect. I think it's just a little bit easier and it just kind of shows you how you can dive into the geometry nodes and change things around. Now I can just kind of like feather the right trigger uh, and then just move the right stick, create a rotation around this. And again, the drag is helping with that as well. And there you go. So this will allow you to really set up some cool looking stuff. The beauty of Blender, especially with Blender 4.3, you have a lot more real time capabilities, even with motion blur. Again, this depends on your computer, but uh, I'll turn that on. You see, we're getting a little bit of motion blur there, especially whenever we kind of like zoom past stuff, crank this up. You should be able to, I mean, this should be nauseating amounts of motion blur. Yep. Another really cool benefit is this is all being recorded whenever you click this button right here. So this is all run from that simulation setup. So if I just gonna, you know, make some movements, whatever. Oh, that's cool. I want to turn that into an animation. You just right click here to stop it. And now you can see I just scrub through. There's everything I just did. So it automates the animation as well. Run through that simulation. So that is everything you need to know to get up and running with the drone plugin. Like I said at the beginning, I've been experimenting with this a lot. So in a few days, I'll have another video up talking about combining the drone camera animations with some cool tech like 3D Gaussian splatting scans and geometry node animations. I might even make a third video if there's enough interest taking this all into Unreal Engine. So if you like the Blender drone stuff, subscribe for more and comment what you'd like to see next. Ooh.